Merlin, Network Magic. Hi everybody, John Capobianco here, and I did a quick Twitter poll, I'm letting people know that, uh, don't mind the haircut here, uh, <laughs> letting people know that um, I was going to be reshooting my videos, and I did a quick poll as to what they wanted to see, and the top winner, the answer that people wanted was Learn Genie Learn. So this video is going to be exploring the Genie software development kit from Cisco SDK at both the command line as a CLI command and also as a Pythonic library that we can call. So we're going to start with the CLI and then we're going to move into how I've integrated and how I heavily lean on these learn features and functions to create magic carpet. So let's get right into it. So first place that you want to start is um, the Cisco DevNet Sandbox. So I, um, I have a sandbox going. If I go to the Get Started here and log in with my GitHub, and if I go to my reservations, you'll see that I have an uh, uh, iOS XE on CSR. I've just switched it up a little bit from the NXOS just to, to test my code against different platforms. And so I have a connection to this standalone router here in the cloud. Now again, you want to be looking at the Pi ATS on the developer.cisco.com slash Pi ATS, right? And we want to accelerate our DevOps with Pi ATS. And here we have the Genie Pi ATS SDK, and it takes you to the Genie docs, and there's incredible documentation about these tools. Now, I've already skipped to the main command line, right? Genie command line, Genie Learn, and how we can use it at the command line for a single feature or multiple features or all features. And also the summary documentation of Genie operational recipes, right? And where does Cisco recommend you start? Just like where I recommend people start with network automation and infrastructure as code is to learn things, learn the interfaces on the device and their operational state, learn any protocol state, right? Platforms, line cards, let's just learn about our environment. Now here is the list of commands minus config. These are the models that we can learn against devices agnostically. And we get the same JSON structure back from any platform we run these learn features against. So let's try this. Now, what do you need? You need a test bed file. So let me launch VS Code. Whoops, not yet. Let me activate my environment and go into the Merlin directory and then launch VS Code. And um, what I mean by a testbed is we need a testbed file that is how we connect to securely and pass credentials and establish the IP address and that we're using SSH in this case with the device ID and an alias. All right, so I need to pass this testbed and um, we can scale this. That's one big advantage here is if I have to learn about, say, OSPF, about 10 routers, well, think about how that is done manually. What am I going to log into each one? You show IP OSPF neighbors, IP OSPF database, show interface status, show IP interface brief, right? Think about all the different commands you would need across 10 routers now to figure out the state of your OSPF, for example, or BGP, or routing, static routing, ARP tables, whatever it is, the old way of logging in as a human and running the commands at the CLI, we're beyond that. And I'll show you how you can move beyond that. So now that I have this environment, let's learn. Now, I'm. let me change directories first. I made a little learn demo folder to store all the output here. And now let's just run the command and the command is genie learn and I want to learn the full config against that testbed file. Now this is just as easy as launching putty and SSHing in or it's just as easy as running an Ansible playbook. I just need to be in a 
in an activated Pythonic 3 environment with PyATS installed and a valid testbed file. That's it. Once I have that, here's what I can do. Go ahead and learn the config. So now that I'm ready to learn the config, we're just going to run this command. And I have to, again, point to the valid testbed location. So let's press enter here. And what's going to happen is it's learning the config on the device. And it gives me the time and the status, bang, like that. And now I have the ops structure and the device console. And I have them both in, well, I have three output files from this. My connection. This is the connection to the device. You can see that it's set up correctly. And then I have the console, which is the raw CLI show run. Wow. And I have it as JavaScript object notation. Now, I believe if I were to rename this file, let's try this, .json, right? It's, it is truly valid JSON. I don't know why I'll talk to them, why they would make that .txt instead of .json, but right, look at, this is the running config as JavaScript object notation and the raw CLI through one command learn config. Pretty incredible, right? Why log in, set up your putty logging, set up your terminal width and this and no more and show run and then dump the thing to a file, right? Like I know there's many ways you can do a copy run FTP and dump it out that way. But why like why go through any of that trouble? Just learn it. And you get it in two different ways. One of them you can start interacting with programmatically. Very cool. So let's do just a specific feature. So instead of learning config, let's learn OSPF. And it's going to go ahead and learn OSPF command line functions here. Now OSPF is interesting because it's, it's, it's um, uh, running multiple OSPF commands and putting them and organizing them all into a nice structure. So I think I, I, do I have new files here? So here's the OSPF and it doesn't really have, it's not running OSPF. Let me flush these files out before I do that again. So now let's try to learn two different features. Now, so now let's try to learn two different features. And um, that's not the syntax for it. Ignore that. That's the wrong syntax. Let's try to learn BGP and interface. Whoops, I'm sorry about this. BGP and interface. And you just chain them together like that with, without any... And it will learn BGP. And then it will learn interfaces. So we actually get right the BGP and the interface, BGP looking like this, and interface looking like this, with all the different interfaces. And again, if I rename this .json, it's ready to go as a JSON file. So we know that this only has a few interfaces, right? Everything we need to know in just a few commands. Now, how do we do this, right? Can we do this Pythonically? Well, yes, of course. Let me just get rid of this folder here. And uh, I will get into how I use Learn in my programs. Now, I use it a few different ways in, um, in both Merlin and Lancelot and Excalibur. Um, I... Well, at least in Merlin and Lancelot, I'm using the learn feature. So let's look at Merlin for the CSR. That's the platform I have open. And I need to open another file real quick when we get there. Uh, let, I'll do, I'll split screen when we get there. So um, don't worry too much about the code, but here I'll highlight where I use learn. So I have a whole section and it looks like I could just chain them all together but I learn them separately to dump them into individual files. And I, because it's repeatable code, 
And because we want to work object-oriented, we've made this general uh, functionalities file that has the classes for the parse learn function. And what's happening is, is we're defining parse learn and then with steps, so it's a PyETS steps, try and accept the learn function name and that's what we're passing in as the different functions. So in the IS, the, the CSR sandbox, we're doing ACL, ARP, .1x, interface, and routing is what we're learning. Now I take what we've learned. Well, let's run it, and then I'll sh and then I and we'll explore what I do with what we've learned. How about that? So we're just going to highlight this line of code here, and run Merlin against the CSR, where I have the VPN tunnel. And again, hands-free operation here. So now, right now, it's learning everything that it can about the platform. And now it's moved on to the parsing, which it will do a different video about. But it's the same kind of idea. Whereas instead of using learn, we're using parse and a specific show command. Now it's stored all the output. Every step has passed. I have my little... Camelot ASCII that says I've made it to the end. So let's go take a look at what we get. So in Camelot, Cisco, DevNet, Sandbox, right, learned ACL. Well, what ACLs does this have? It has one ACL for Meraki FQDN DNS, right? And I put that into the spreadsheet. Um, learned ARP. Well, here's the ARP table in, and it has some entries in ARP. And now I take these statistics and I take these interfaces and I generate different reports. So this is the ARP report and you can see the IP address and the MAC address. And then I also have the statistics in nice CSV files, in markdown files that render nicely as well. Right, so we've learned quite a bit about this device. I have to quickly check what other things we've learned, but you get the idea that just through these simple learn features and through Jinja2 templating, well, I can, you know, I have learned ACL, ARP, BGP, .1x, interface, OSPF, routing, and VLAN in the sandbox. Excuse me. <coughs> and then in iOS XE, like in a real environment, right, I can learn even more. LLDP, NTP, routing, STP, lots more, and then all these different show commands. So I hope that helps, and I'm going to just switch back to the main screen here real quick and start chatting. Now, again, I the CLI is not dead, but using it manually, logging into it, and typing commands as a human being, I think those days are numbered. Because why would you do it any other way? Why would you not just simply install WSL, install Ubuntu, install PyATS, build a testbed file for your environment or for a single device or however you'd like to do it and start learning features this way with just a one line command, right? What's the routing look like on router 10? No problem. Genie learn OSPF, Genie learn routing, Genie learn config at scale, right? Boom, there's JSON, boom, there's the raw CLI output. You're still using the CLI, but you're using it more like a like an interface, like a REST API. Right? It doesn't have to be human operations anymore. So again, I just I want to finish this to by reminding everyone I'm not a Cisco employee. I didn't, uh, you know, I don't have anything to gain by you starting to do things this way. I'm just trying to. Um, I really see that this is how network operators, engineers, architects are all going to start to slide into DevOps, slide into programmability. Um, and this is one of those um, very easily overlooked and missed tools is this learn feature and learn functionality from the Genie SDK and the PyATS framework. And as you see, Merlin, 
my code just clone it make your test bed run it boom you have a massive document of stateful information in business ready documentation so thanks so much for supporting merlin it will be out very soon